friends, welcome to ECCB Connects. Have you started saving for your retirement? How do you plan to sustain yourself during retirement? On this week's program, Percival Hanley looks at financial planning, creating, growing, and protecting your wealth in preparation for retirement. How do people sustain themselves during retirement? Some rely on state pensions, uh, for example, from the government, and some rely on occupational pensions from companies. Some people rely on savings and investment. And that's great because you, you gotta save, and if you invest wisely, that's a good way of ensuring a, a steady and at least a reliable income during your, your retirement years. Um, some rely on donations, example by children. That one is not a good one. Especially these days, there was a time when, when parents and so on relied on their um, children to provide some means of uh, maintenance uh, in their old age. But these days, I think the level of, um, of, of commitment, financial commitment that the, the, the offspring of those people have is such that they have nothing left over from their own life. Uh, commitments in order to be able to pass on something to, to those parents. And so parents have to become self-sufficient in that regard and not so much rely on the children because when they do, they're actually burdening those children. Then many rely on social benefits such as social security scheme or national insurance scheme. But that is not, well, let's put it this way. That gives you a significantly reduced income. Okay? And therefore, it's not like, okay, I'm working for uh, $4,000 now, and therefore when I'm finished uh, and retired, then Social Security is going to continue paying me $4,000. It doesn't work that way. It's only a percentage of what you work for. Then the people rely on income from rent, dividends, investments, and business. Of course, in order to get these benefits, one has to set the groundwork during your, 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 your substantive career. Um, in order, for example, rent. You won't get rent by waiting until you retire and say, okay, let me get some rent. You have to build a property while you are working and can pay a mortgage for such a property. You have to build that property and ensure that it has the facility to be rented so that you can continue to earn something uh, from, from it. Um, of course, if you have things like shares and, 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 and other investments, you will earn the, the rewards from those. So when does an individual begin to um, start planning for retirement? And as Ms. Uh, Ms. Chariton said, as soon as he or she begins to work. And this is something I've stressed to people all the time. Uh, look around the, 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 the room and I see a lot of young people. And the funny thing is when you tell young people um, about retirement, they look at you like, what are you talking about? Don't you see how young I am? You know, that's so far away. But trust me, young people, it spins around really, really rapidly. And you'll be surprised that you're going along thinking, well, I have so many years ahead of me and so many years. And then one day you wake up to say, wait, where have those years gone? And retirement is just around the corner. What have I done to prepare myself for it? And then you're in a scramble now trying to figure out how do I put things in place that I ignored to do for so many years. Um, so the earlier you begin to plan and to save and to invest, the better off you would be at retirement, and the less stressful the process would be if you start, than if you started late. But of course, if you have not yet started, the best time to do so is now. Don't put it off. So what is your retirement plan? Um, many people have different um, strategies. Some have none. Something must work out. Is that your plan? It shouldn't be. Some people have the plan, have lots of children. They will support me. We talked about that already. Okay? It doesn't work. Yes, it did many years ago. You would hear many, many uh, oldsters who would say, oh, I have eight children. And, you know, they will support me. But sometimes when you talk to these uh, uh, parents, you will discover that somewhere along the line, they're wondering where those children are. Okay, and when they go to them and they, they uh, ask for help, the children, well, you know, I have my own commitments. I have my children to feed. I have my mortgage to pay. I have my car to pay for. I have insurance to pay for. I have this. I have that. I, I really can't manage. Okay, and so therefore, you have to realize that you cannot rely 
on having the, the, the dozen children anymore, okay, you have to start planning for yourself. Some will say, well, I just have to wait until I'm old and rely on Social Security benefits. Will that work? Social Security, as we'll find out, only pays you a small portion of what you earned during your, your career life. Some you can save and invest now and continuously to ensure an adequate to comfortable source of income throughout retirement. And that, I think, is the best plan. Start investing and looking for sources of income so that you can find yourself in a com comfortable state of retirement. So how long is retirement? That's something many people don't think about. They think of retirement, yes, but how long? And what you have is going to depend on how long. Because some people may retire at let's say 60, but they only have five years um, living income. What happens after that? Yes, maybe they might not live beyond the five years, but what if they do? Okay. So therefore, one needs to make sure that you, you, you work out the maximum and I'm going to talk about that in a, in a second. But of course, as I said here, it depends on one state of health too. And we heard a lot about that. And it depends on your longevity prospects. How does one plan for retirement? Savings. Start early. Don't stop. Invest in high yielding and as, as high yielding an account as possible. That is so difficult these days though because it's like the banks are conspiring against us. The interest rates are so low. I mean, five years ago, I could tell you about where to find 6% and 7% interest. Today, I can hardly find where to tell you to find 4%. Okay? Um, but even so, even with the low interest rates, you can still do it, and it can still be significant, and I'll show you how. Make it as untouchable as possible. What do I mean by that? I'll give you a, a typical example. Most people, they get their salaries today. The money goes into the bank. And the very same day, they're so anxious. They, they want to know, when is the money on my account? And as soon as it's there, they're drawing off a huge portion of it to start paying some bills. Okay, no problem there. But then tomorrow, they're digging in there again for some more. And then the following day, they're digging in again for some more. And then by next week, they're asking the bank, uh, how much can I leave on the account to keep it open? <laughs> and therefore, you know, they're not making any progress at all because they are not saving, they are spending. And you shouldn't be just simply spenders. And I think today people are, sp are concentrating more on spending than on saving. And I think we need to focus more on the saving aspect of things. Convert savings occasionally. So you're gonna save, yes. That's the initial, the initial thing, but savings isn't the end all. You want to save to the point where you have sufficient money to then convert into more uh, lucrative investments, okay? And here's an important point. Ensure that the yield on your account is greater than the rate of inflation. Many people don't think about that. Check that statistic. You can go on the ECB, ECCB website and find out what is the rate of inflation for St. Kitts, for Dominica, for any of the islands. And if the rate of inflation is higher than the interest that you're getting on an account, your money is losing value. As simple as that. Your money is losing value. And therefore, you have to make sure that you find an investment that is earning you more than the rate of inflation or you are behind. Okay? They are actually taking money out of, out of your pocket and putting it in. If you religiously save $500 a month, and for a lot of people that is very, very doable, because as Ms. Shadron said, many of us spend more than that sometimes on nothing. When I say nothing, we waste it. We go drinking, we go spreeing, we do a lot of things that aren't really uh, valuable to your life, and we waste that money. You could put it on a savings every month. You put $500 on a savings every month, even at the meager rate of 3% that we're getting now, we can, some people offer two, but let's work with three, okay? And you can see that by the first year, it sounds like nothing because you've put in $6,000 and your account will only be showing $6,098.40. So that sounds like, <laughs> that's not really worth it. I'm putting over $6,000 
and I'm only going to get $98.40 for all my trouble. But it's as the years go on. And young people, think about this, okay? Because if you are 25 now, and you're aiming for, let's say, retirement of 65, you have 40 years. And notice what I'm showing as you go along. Um, uh, after, uh, well, let's, let's go down the track. Let's choose year 15. By year 15, you'll see that your savings has now grown to $113,770. By just putting aside $500 a month, okay? But look at what you have deposited so far. Only 90000 and you are now at 113000 But for those people who have 40 years ahead of them before retirement, look what happens after 40 years. The amount deposited would have been 240000 Imagine that. Where would you think you can save 240000 That's a quarter million dollars. Okay? But look what you'll be worth. $464,187.26 at 3%. Okay? And so, starting now is important and not stopping. Don't stop, don't interrupt it, don't pull out a piece to do this and pull out a piece to that. Leave that there. Which means that uh, you, you should also uh, plan to have maybe more than one savings. One for retirement, one for, you know, when I'm going to build a house, young people. Um, one for getting the children into school and getting them educated and so on and so on. You have to plan the, those different little facets and keep them in separate accounts so you know what belongs to what and doing it accordingly, all right? Some of the investments that we can take on, apart from savings, and remember I told you the savings is only in the initial part, and then after that you're gonna try to convert it into something that's a little more um, lucrative. Term deposits, they usually bring you a higher rate. And not only that, but they're more of the lock-in kind of investment where you put it there for, let's say, one year to five years or whatever term you choose, and you literally are prevented, in a, in a way, from um, troubling it before its maturity. And the thing is, you should make sure when you have the maturity, you also don't trouble it. Just roll it over again, and the interest will be compounding. Stocks and shares. Invest in stocks and shares. Um, there are companies around that you can look at and find out which ones are the successful ones, which ones are making money, which ones pays good dividends, and therefore, you can invest in those. Even treasury bills. Treasury bills can earn you decent money. The rates are going down like everything else too, but at the same time, they're there. Bonds, uh, and ECSC will tell you about that. Real estate, very important. Um, real estate is one of the things, as Dr. Chatton said, soil don't spoil. And therefore, if you invest in land, invest in property, you, you will find that the values of those accrue at enormous rates that, some, that most usually and in almost all cases, except for a few, will beat the rate of inflation by many times. Okay? Uh, or your own business. Find something that you like to do and make a business out of it. Make some money. Okay? But with each thing that you do, consider the risk. Because there's a risk involved in everything, especially with investments. There's risk, but you need to consider what those risks are. Maintain a good credit rating during your career years. That's very important because when you retire and you head to the bank and you're not working in a, a full-time job anymore, uh, if you have a good credit rating with the bank, suddenly when you go in there, they'll still smile at you and say, yes, we can help you. We know you're a reliable person when it comes to payment. And especially if they can see that you have the correct um, income, that you still have an income source and so on and so on, they know your reliability and they will continue to lend you. But if you have been a delinquent borrower all your career life, zilch for you when you, when you retire. Uh, plan to have your major debts paid off, right? Don't, don't have debts going in. That's why most of the, the banks and so on, they tell you that when you, for example, you go for a mortgage, they base the mortgage on your retirement age. That's the cutoff time. Because they want to make sure when you go into retirement that you don't have a mortgage to pay for still. Your house is paid off, and especially if you have a part of it that can rent, you now have an income from your house without having to pay anything, and you're, you're sailing free. Ensure you have a good medical scheme. Very important. We heard about that. Term life insurance. And I call term life important true life insurance. Okay? Why? Because I consider the other whole life insurance as death insurance. Because it's only paid when you die. So I don't know why they call it life insurance. It's death insurance. Okay? Because somebody else gets it when you die. Okay? But term life is life insurance. You get it when you're alive. Okay? So that's something to, to think about. 
Turn your talents, your skills, your hobbies into income earning business. Make use of pension plans by your employer. Have children early. Don't have them burdening you at the later stages of your life. How much is enough? As we heard, the rule of thumb is to have at least, uh, uh, give, enough, give you at least 65 to 70% of your retirement income to live comfortably. Another rule of thumb is to ensure you have sufficient to allow about 4% withdrawal per annum from your retirement savings. And uh, there are things which you can go online and find out how to do exactly that. When you retire, do plan to enjoy your retirement. Some people do things they didn't have the time or money to do before, like travel. You may need to reduce your expenses once you retire, depending on your lifestyle. And we heard a bit about that before. Don't forget to plan re-health issues. And we again heard about that. Manage your retirement funds wisely. I say this because a lot of some of the companies that have retirement funds, they don't really do it as a, a true retirement in that they pay you like a, a monthly in uh, payment from it. Many of them have it where, okay, you get a lump sum. For a lot of people, that's a dangerous thing because they find all sorts of things to use this money for because it sounds like a lot of money, but it will disappear very quickly. You need to know how to manage that money. Once you get a lump sum like that, put it in a proper investment to make sure it continues to earn while you use it and use it sparingly because you have to make lifestyle changes in your spending and in your living. Um, and the next slide, the final one, uh, just gives a little breakdown of a, 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 a rudimentary budget, not a full budget, um, but just show you, let's say for example, somebody by the time they reach the retirement has a salary of $5,000, okay? And if you take the normal one on the left, you'll see where the social security comes out, you pay $4,006. Um, you, you have to pay rent or mortgage, depending on which one you have. Uh, and the funny thing is, if you have rent, if you're paying rent by the time you retire, do you realize once you retire, you're still going to be paying rent? Okay? Whereas if you had a mortgage, you should have paid it off by retirement, and therefore that expense would have gone and you have a property and equity in your hands. You may have loans to pay. You may have insurance, food and general shopping, utilities, and your total expenses in this case, I'm just showing some figures just for the sake of, of an example. 4,003, you have a little surplus. However, when you retire, that salary, based on what Social Security might pay, which I think is a maximum, and it varies depending on how long you've been paying Social Security, the maximum you can get from Social Security under a $5,000 regular salary would be $3,000, okay? Um, so right there, that has decreased by $2,000. You won't have to pay Social Security anymore, but will you get a pension? Will you get a pension for the company you work for? If you're only, if you're one of those eight companies, yes. If you're not, no. That's why I have the question mark there. So you realize if you didn't, if you don't, you're still at three thousand dollars. Your rent um, income, would you, would you get that? Okay. If you don't, again, you're still stuck at three thousand dollars, and therefore you'll find if you have the same expenses as you had when you were, you'll be in a deficit. To view any episode of ECCB Connects anytime, any place at your convenience, check out our YouTube channel, ECCB Connects. This brings us to the end of this week's episode of ECCB Connects. We invite you to log on to our Facebook page at 7 p.m. this evening for a live stream of the 22nd Sir Arthur Lewis Memorial Lecture. Thanks for watching. See you next time.